Hi, for this next couple of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to look at brushes using BSPs or geometry, as we call them, um, to create shapes um, when you need to have something kind of blocked out. Now, uh, normally in, in game engines, what you do is when you're trying to build an environment, and I talked about this in an earlier video, when you're building a large scale environment, it's good to kind of block things out and have an idea of where buildings are going to go, where large shapes are going to go. And geometry or brushes are a great way to do something like that. Um, they can be replaced later on with assets that you model in a 3D program and bring in. Um, what I'm going to show you today is how to create some large scale um, interior spaces um, using the tools um, uh, that the brushes give you. And we're specifically going to be talking today about additive and subtractive brushes um, because you're going to need to know how to do those uh, for the first assignment. Now I have an empty uh, world here. I don't have any content in it because I don't need anything for this particular thing that I'm going to do. Um, and I don't really want this world. I want to create an interior space, a large interior space, and all of this stuff that you see out here is completely unnecessary. Now, I could go along and I could subtract each one of those things. I can just click on them over here and delete them and get back to where I want to go. But let me show you a quick way to do this. If you go up to the File menu and you go to New Level, this is a level. The entire thing we are looking at is a project. But this is a level or a map within that particular project. So this is your standard uh, map level. So I'm going to click New Level, and it's going to give me uh, two choices here, either an empty one or one that looks like the default one that we're in now that has the basic elements. Because I don't need any of that exterior stuff, I'm going to select Empty Level, and I'm not going to save anything that was in that first one. And what you're going to see here, and I will make this a little bit larger, is I have here a world. And I think you can see it down there. There is a grid that runs along down in through here. There's a grid down there, but it's an empty world. There's no lights. There's no uh, sky dome. There's nothing. And it lets me do kind of whatever I want to do. Now, when you're working in this one, uh, this particular mode to do what we're going to do, you need to change your lighting because right now it's set to be lit. And I could put a brush in there right now, but because I have no lights in the scene, um, there is no default lighting. So you're not going to see anything that you're going to do. So I'm going to change this here from lit to unlit, which you're really not going to see any difference now, but you'll see here in a moment when I start adding things. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a box, and I'm going to bring a box out over here, and you're going to get this little red, you can see a little red outline there, and I'm going to let go, and the box is going to appear. Now, if I go back up and change that to lit, which is what it was, and deselect, you're not going to see it. It's there. Okay, but you really can't tell that it's there. So I'm going to go with unlit for the time being until I get some lights in there. And then let's look and see what we've got here. So when I look over here in my transforms, what I want to do is I want to make some changes to this box. Okay, right now it is an additive box. I have added it into my world. And to think of the difference between an additive and subtractive, the way I like to look at it is in an additive world, the world is completely empty. There's no substance, um, there's no dark matter, there's nothing. It's just, you just have a gigantic empty space. The whole universe is empty. And you are adding objects into an empty universe. In a subtractive, uh, using subtractive uh, geometry, what you're saying basically is I have a world for lack or a universe, say, filled with concrete. So I've got this giant concrete mass the size of the universe. And in subtractive, I use my geometry to carve out spaces. So I am subtracting from that giant world of concrete so I have some holes in which to live. Most of the time, we deal with additive. And that used to be creating subtractive was the way to go if you were doing something like the inside of a cavern. Um, or inside of a building and you weren't going to go outside at all, you would use subtractive because it ignores all of the outside space. Um, that was in an older version of the program where uh, the, 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 basically it counted all of your space as against your memory. So if you have a giant universe that's empty, you're still using up a lot of memory, whereas if you go subtractive, um, it ignores what would be solid concrete and only looks at what is subtracted. But they've changed the way that the program configures uh, space, and, and subtractive is kind of going away. And you're going to see here in a second a quick way to do subtractive that's a whole lot easier uh, when you need to subtract space. All right, now, 
the tools over here under transform I have location I have rotation and I have scale okay now I also have brush settings underneath that the brush type it's preset to additive the brush shape which is a box and then I've got some X Y and Z settings and people usually ask me well let's say I wanted to change the size of that box let's say that box is fine but I'd like it to be bigger than that um, which way should I go do I go and change the X Y and Z size or do I change the scale and what I always say to them is you want to make sure that you're changing the size of something using X Y and Z um, if you are uh, we're gonna be using like pixel sizes and uh, it's much easier when you're typing in specific sizes for a room uh, let's say like the, the, the human character in the game which is going to be uh, the, the, the whenever I'm building an interior space I have to go by the size of the character and I'm not dealing with a character in this game so I don't really know but the character is about 96 units high 96 units is about a six foot tall human all right so um, basically it's 16 units or 16 uh, uh, pixels or whatever you want to refer to them at per foot um, in Unreal. So um, when I'm creating a room, I need to know the room is going to be big enough for me to run around in. And taking into account the fact that a character is just under 100 units, then I'm going to have to make sure that my room is based, uh, its size is based according to that. If I'm using scale, I'm just guessing. I have no idea, is that one and a half times the size of this box? Is it five times the size of this box? Whereas if I use X, Y, and Z, I can type in specific amounts. All right. So first thing I'm going to do here is under location, I'm going to get this thing at zero, zero, zero in my world. Right? Now I may have to go looking for it because when you do something like that, generally it moves it. You're sort of wherever you happen to be is where that is. And I'm also going to look at my X, Y, and Z pivot point there so I know which direction is which. And um, you can also look in the bottom left-hand corner. These little things will tell you X is the red arrow. That's going to be this way. Y is going to be that way. Z is going to be up and down. So I know when I'm creating this thing, uh, basically which way I have to look at it. If I'm dealing with it, X is usually side to side. Y is back to front. And Z is up and down. All right. So uh, my rotation is 0, 0, 0 because I'm not going to rotate it. And I'm going to leave the scale at 1, 1, 1. So it's the same size. I'm going to use these settings down here to go in and type in. I'll make this room 1024 wide. I'll make it 1024 deep. And I'm going to make it 512 high. That's going to be a fairly large space. And I'll back out of that thing. All right. Now, because it is additive, and I talked about this in another video, when you go inside of something, there's no inside to it. So if I go in there and I look, if I go inside, you can see there's nothing in there. All right. I can actually see the grid down below, uh, just as if I was outside of that box. There's a grid down here. I go inside. There's a grid because um, I'm seeing clear through that box, and there's nothing in there. If I come up above the top, I can see it like this. All right. So that is additive. Now, if I would like to add some more spaces, I can do that. I can I can bring in some other objects. I can put some curved stairs. There's no inside of this thing yet. If I wanted to create another one, what I can do is I can hold down uh, the Alt key, and then I can just select it and drag. And you'll see it turns yellow to begin with because I'm really just dragging that brush. And when I let go, there's another one. So if I'm using Alt, left click, and drag, I can create another object, and I can delete it if I want to. It doesn't need to be there. If I want to change the settings on it, I click it again. So I have it over here. It's 1024 by 1024, wide and deep, and then 512 high. Now remember, my character is about 96 units, so that's about five times the height of a human. So it's a fairly large uh, playable space if I wanted to go in and do something like that. Now the problem with it is there is no inside. There's only an outside. And this box does have a, a collision. So if I went up here on top of this and I put a player start, if I went back over here to my basic and I got a player start and dragged it out and put it in on top of this thing, boom, like this, that's where I would start. I don't have any lights in the scene, so I can't do it. And I'd be running around the top of this thing. But I want to be inside of that. I really don't want to be on the outside of that. And this is where subtractive comes in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a copy of this box and I'm going to drag it over a little bit like that. And I'm going to change the specifications on it. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's make this one 1,000 by 1,000. Um, and 512 would be, um, say, that would be about 4, 488. And I've created a box that's a little bit smaller. And then to get it precisely on the inside of that, I'm going to set the X, Y, and Z positions to 0, 0, and 0. And now if I go back in here and I look at this thing in wireframe, what I would see is one box directly inside of another box. And you can see the one I have selected is orange. There is the outside box. There is the inside box. And no matter which way I look at this thing, it is perfectly aligned. It's about 12 units smaller than the other one. And it sits inside of it. So let's go back and look at this thing and unlit. And now what we'll do is we'll go inside. And if I go inside, I have one box. I have another box directly inside of it. But I can't, if I go inside of that, there's still no inside in here. And what I have to do in that second box, which is brush number two up over here in my list, is I want to change that from additive to subtractive. And what that is now doing is it is subtracting from this big box. And again, think of a, you know, additive is going to be a big box of concrete. And I put subtractive in there. I've actually taken a big box away from the concrete. Now when I go in, I have interior space. And that's about... 12 units between the edge of that one and the edge of the one on the outside. There's a little slight gap. And so what I've got here is I've got an outside space and I have, oops, and I have an inside space. Put that back in there. And uh, if I were to go in here now and play, because this has got interior, this is subtractive, what it does is it turns the collision inside out. So now I have collision on the inside of this box. All right. Now, this is a bit of a hassle to get them another one made, to get it in there, and to do all of that is a little bit of a hassle. So let me show you a little trick. I'm going to, to uh, make sure box two is selected. I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to zoom back out of that so I'm on the outside of this one, and I'm going to click on that. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here in this little video um, is a new tool that they have added in here called Hollow, and Hollow does exactly what you think it would do. It's going to take that box and it's going to hollow it out. It automatically makes the interior space. All right. Now, uh, you can set right here, you can set the wall thickness. I think before I had it uh, 10, so I'll set that to 12. I mean, I've had it 12 uh, before and I'll do 12. Now I've got a 12 uh, uh, point gap or pixel gap between all of those things. I've got an interior space. I've got an exterior space. And um, it all works really well, and it's just a click of a button. Um, it's really good if you're only going to do um, the inside of one space. And technically speaking, I don't need the outside of this box. If I was only going to be inside, then what I would do would be to turn off hollow. And then turn this box to subtractive. And I would have an inside space, but I would not have an outside space. So um, that would be uh, probably a better way to do that. But this, this little hollow trick is a nice way to go. The only problem that you're going to have is when you try to create um, a hallway attached to another room, which I'm going to do in the next video, you're going to see where using hollow can be a little bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this and I'll pick it up again um, in the next video.